I would invite all of our young people to come and join me up here for a little bit this morning. They're filing out of the back back there. <laughs> How are you guys today? Good, it's good to see you. Way too warm, these guys look cold. They still have their coats on. <laughs> it is, it feels very hot outside. Yesterday almost felt like we were getting a glimpse of summer. <laughs> so Bella kind of already touched on what I was going to ask you guys about today. You did. What are you looking forward to? Oh, summer. To summer. How many weeks of school are left? Do you guys know? I think we're at seven right now. You guys are starting week seven. The countdown is on, huh? What are you looking forward to the most for summer? You don't know? Is technically not in summer by your graduation? Yes, my graduation. It is in summer. Um, well... Your guys' summer break will get to start early because of it. But yes, so I'll be graduating from ILIF on June 2nd. And so, I know, that is your last day of school. These guys get to get out a little early so we can go to that. <laughs> what else are you guys looking forward to this summer? Um, going swimming, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> What are you looking forward to, Ethan? Playing frisbee golf. Oh. Yeah, just being outside, huh? <laughs> I have two other ones. Um, seeing our dad and seeing Ringo. Yes. But one thing I'm not excited about is brushing Ringo. Oh, <laughs> is he a hairy dog? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so summer gives us a lot to look forward to, huh? Right now, though, it feels like we're just kind of stuck in this time of waiting, right? It yeah. seems like the days take forever when we're counting down to the end of something. So what are some things that you can do during this time period while you're waiting for summer? Sleep so that way it goes faster. Sleep, it goes faster. Yeah, get some rest. Getting rest is a good thing. Go to school, keep our normal routine, huh? What else can you do during this time Go period? Go to school and fall asleep. I don't think we're supposed to fall asleep in school. <laughs> but we do, we just, the days just keep passing by and we get into our normal routine, huh? And we look forward to what is coming. Kind of, yeah. Like school, I'm not yeah. working for to that. <laughs> And what do we need to make sure that we are doing, even though it's just this time period of waiting and it feels like we're just like a will just turning the same thing every single day. What do we still need to make sure that we're doing during that time? Breathing. Well, breathing, of course, yes. <laughs> but uh, breathing and sleeping, taking care of ourselves. Yes, so we still have to have fun during that time, huh? Even though we know that summer is probably going to be fun, we still have to have fun during this time. Playing gaga ball, yes, all these little things that help us along the way while we're waiting for something big. Yes, you are exactly right. We still have to have fun along the way. Still have to take care of ourselves, look out for other people. We have to continue being good, doing good, being kind, right? Still have to get our chores done and our homework done. I know, sometimes we don't like doing those things. You don't ever have homework? That's good. The only kind of homework I like is if like, you have to like, make a board game or it's like an art game. Yeah, creative stuff, huh? So, as you guys are waiting for summer, as you're waiting for this time of the year that you're looking forward to so much, my hope is that you will remember that during this normal time that feels like it's the same thing day after day, that you guys will remember to take care of yourselves, that you will remember to find fun in each day, that you will remember to help others out, to do good, 
to show them kindness and generosity? Can you guys do that? Okay, I think you can. Let's say a prayer. Yeah, I know it does feel like we just go from one Sunday to the next to the next right now. <laughs> Let's say a prayer and then you guys can get some candy. Lord, I thank you so much for all of these young people and the ways that they make our life better. I pray that each one of them feel your presence in every day of their life. And as they look forward to an exciting time, I pray that in the midst of this normal routine, that they remember to do good, to show love to others, to be kind and to help each other out. And I also pray that they remember to take care of themselves. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. All right, you want to grab that candy basket? <laughs> Alrighty. You gonna put it up? Okay, thank you. Good morning. Our scripture today is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. A living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable and undefiled and unfading kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this rejoice, we even, if now for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the geniusness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him, now you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is the second Sunday of Easter. And this Sunday always feels a little bit strange. It's kind of this in-between time period. We've had this wonderful time period of Lent leading up to the death and the resurrection. Easter, of course, is always a huge celebration, a time that our pews are full. We have huge dinners, we spend time with our family. There's a lot of excitement on that day. And we celebrate that Christ is risen, and Christ is risen indeed. And then another Sunday rolls around, and we get back into what feels like this normal routine, this time of waiting for something else to come. As I've thought about what this time period of life feels like, it feels a little bit empty, like the empty tomb. Like there's just a lot of nothing going on right now. We're waiting for warmer weather. The ski hill is closed now, so we can't just go out and go enjoy that. We can't go skiing, but it's not quite warm enough to go hiking yet. There's still too much snow on the trail. So we just wait. We wait for the melt. 
We want to look outside and see our grass getting green. I'm ready to smell the sprinklers and the spring and summer air, but it's just not there yet. We're just waiting. Yesterday I did peek out of the window and notice that I could spy with my little eye a yellow daffodil beginning to bloom. Just one little touch of color. Yet we're waiting, waiting and waiting for the flowers to grow. The kids are so excited, we just took a trip. They had their Easter break, or what is spring break here in Shoto, and we got to go on a little vacation up to Flathead Lake, and we had a taste of summer weather up there. They all got sunburned as they were out playing ping pong and basketball. And they were so excited for the summer months to come, but they're just not here yet. They had to come back. They had to go to school the next day. They had to get back into that normal routine, this time period where we are just waiting. I think about what it must have been like for Peter and the other disciples during this time period of waiting for the church to be built after Christ had died and was resurrected. We spent a lot of time over the last several weeks learning about Simon Peter and the disciples and their time with Jesus. We took a look at what life may have been like for them. We explored some of the places that they gathered with Jesus and some of those teachings. We learned about the death and the resurrection and the empty tomb. We learned that Jesus had told Peter that he was the rock, the one that the church was going to be built upon, and that he held the keys to heaven, that he was going to go and share this good news with the rest of the world. But after the death, after the resurrection, they were just in this time period of waiting. This time period where the church had not fully formed yet. The Holy Spirit had not been sent to them yet. They were just waiting, waiting and waiting. And it feels redundant, like a will just rolling and rolling and rolling and you can't see the place that it's going to stop. It just feels like time marches on. It just keeps going and going. And when we get stuck in that normal routine, sometimes it's easy for us to lose track of what we had been focusing on throughout Lent and especially Easter. We forget to find joy in our everyday life. We get caught up with work. We get caught up with just going about the normal business of life. We go to the grocery store. We cook dinner. We help our kids with homework. We send them off to school. Maybe we invite our grandkids over for a play date, but it's just normal routine. Nothing exciting seems to be happening. Peter's letter though reminds me that there is something that we should be excited about during this time that we are waiting. News that he had to share with others. And it was this assurance that in Christ, we have this wonderful life. We have this promise and this hope. He reminds us that the ways of this world, the normalcy of this world, are not what living is about. He reminds us that there is a place that we will be going to. This promise that we have because of the risen Christ, that we will spend eternity. And so what do we do during this time period, this time period of waiting to get from here to there? What is the purpose of our life during this time? I think our purpose is to do exactly what Christ commanded Peter to do, exactly what the greatest commandment is to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ and transform the world. We are not called to just get stuck in our ways, in our normal routine. 
We are called to get uncomfortable a little bit, to do something out of the ordinary, to keep us going along that way, to change the lives of others. If the disciples had just retreated after that tomb was empty, we would not be gathered here today. They sat and they, they waited, but they didn't do it without action. Their time together was secret, it was secluded, but they kept talking about Christ. They kept sharing the teachings of Jesus. They kept sharing the love. And they began inviting new people, one at a time, to join what they were doing. And that's what we are called to do. We are called to invite others to join us. Whether it's here in our pews or whether it's in our conversation, we are inviting people to be a part of God's love. We are sharing that love with others. We are called to go out and to make a difference in the lives of others. Right now, it feels like we are looking forward to summer. We're looking forward to being able to send these young people off to camp. We're trying to find a way to make their world a better place in the future. But what do we do in that in-between time? How can we reach others? Sometimes I think it is as simple as just being a good person, showing kindness in everything that we do. When we go about our normal routine and our normal business, when we go into the post office or to the grocery store, instead of having a one-track mind of getting what you need and getting out, take time to smile at somebody. Take time to have a conversation with them. Ask them how they're doing. Take time to get to know them. Another thing that we can do is to get outside and enjoy this beautiful weather that is starting to emerge. Go on a prayer walk. Instead of just walking your normal path, take time to be with God. Pray for those whose homes you are walking by. You might not know their story. You might not even know who lives there. But invite the Spirit to be with them and to be at work in their lives. When you have a free moment throughout your day, say a prayer for our children, for our teachers, the ones who are going through the normal routine, trying to just get to the end of the school year. Say a prayer for them. Or even volunteer to go up there. Go spend some time. Read a book with the kids. They've got a wonderful reading program going on right now, and I'm sure that they would invite you into their classrooms to go and read a book to them. Whatever you do throughout your normal routine, share joy and love in every way that you can. This time that feels a little bit empty right now, where it feels like there's just nothing but time and space, can be full of joy. And that comes because of the resurrected Christ. It comes because God keeps our heart full. And we are called to go out and to share that with others. We're going to be doing a couple of different hymns today, hymns that we have not ever sang before. One of them, the one that we will sing right after this, is one that maybe you've heard on the radio. It's something new, it's something different. It's going to make you a little bit uncomfortable, but the words are wonderful. And I hope that filling some of that uncomfortableness, that time of being out of our normal routine and out of our normal element, I hope that that feeling will remind you that when we go forth into this week and into the next several weeks, looking forward to something better, that we are called to be a little uncomfortable. We're not supposed to just get into the groove of ordinary time, going about our ordinary routine. Do something that makes you uncomfortable. Reach out to somebody in a way that maybe you've not done before. 
and show Christ's love everywhere you go. Amen. I would invite you to stand as we join together in singing this hymn. Um, we do not have hymnals for this, and so.